Top five things Tony Petiti brings to the Big Ten. And look, this is just from I'm not I'm not calling people who know him just based on what his experience is. My opinion is what he can bring to the Big Ten, and none of this really has anything to do. And I shouldn't torpedo this for the people who love expansion. Not most of it has nothing to do with expansion. Uh, just about what he can do for the Big Ten right now uh, as it stands. Number five, can bring experience to potential labor issues. He was with MLB, uh, and they are constantly awash in labor issues. So he knows how they deal with those things. And now with players getting you know, money and perhaps getting salaries and all that down the line and labor. Uh, this is a guy who on one of the bigger conferences who, you know, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Wisconsin are going to be at the front of the line of saying at Nebraska of, you know, our players are employees. We need to make sure they make money. They need to negotiate these things out. He has um, seen them. I mean, obviously, he was the COO of, at Major League Baseball for a time. Uh, not the highest up when it comes to that, but, but really he knows that, look, it, you know, how it goes when it gets dicey because the owners and players in Major League Baseball do not get along. They'll hug each other if they win a World Series, and that feels like, to me, the only time they really like each other all that much. Yeah, I mean, he, he does have that experience, and uh, if we're going the pro sports route, then then that will come in handy, but I, I do wonder how much interest some people will keep uh, the, the harder they lean into that direction, even if it is the right thing to do, um, which, you know, on the surface uh, and – yeah, I just say on the surface, but I mean in general, it is the right thing to do is to have to curb what you want to try and curb as some of these athletic directors are looking to do. I, I don't see a whole lot of options outside of going more of this direct route. And if you're the Big Ten and the SEC, you're really the only two that can even afford to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean that'll definitely come in handy. It remains to be seen exactly how hard we're turning in that direction, but you know it looks like it's more of an issue that they're going to have to continue to deal with and not have to deal with moving forward. So, yeah, that, that should come in handy, especially if the Big Ten uh, decides to you know be on the forefront of, of making that move uh, as well. So, yeah, that should, uh, that should be a bonus. Uh, number four, he has deep knowledge of both the NFL and Major League Baseball, especially when it comes to the media distribution side. And Major League Baseball's issue currently notwithstanding, um, I mean, that – Pretty successful on both, for the for the most part. Uh, Major League Baseball's problem is not really Major League Baseball's problem. It's that the company that they, uh, you know, bought some of these rights just doesn't have any money anymore. I don't think that's a total failing of the league and more of a failing of the the company that has them. And the league kind of wants them back anyway. But the NFL's media rights have just gone up and up and up and up. And he was at CBS under Sean McManus, and he knows all these things. He's he's he knows how to navigate that. So uh, I would say that. Um, you know, if you think this Big Ten media deal was great, a guy who really knows these things is going to make it better the next time around. That's one of the first things that Jim Williams sent to me. Uh, Tim Brando tweeted it out. He'll join us tomorrow on, on Petiti. And it was that the relationship that Petiti had with Oresco working for Sean McManus at CBS. Yeah. And Jim Williams is the one that sent that text to me pretty pretty early in the evening last night. Yeah. And following up on something uh, Craig just mentioned, number three has can bring more pro sports insight, uh, not just to the football side, but basketball and, and other sports as well on how they're doing things. Because, again, like Craig, you mentioned that the interest might turn off, but it's going that way. So if it's going that way, you better have people who know it. And that's why Kevin yeah. Warren was there, and that's why I think Tony Petiti's there. And I'm not speaking about Big Ten or SEC fans. I'm speaking mm -hmm. about everybody else. Yeah. They get sick and tired of the the gap that's you know being created. I understand like do you want you don't want it to be different than do something about it. But it's not like you can like change a hundred years of history and the foundations yeah. of college athletics. I mean, so yeah, would would do that if it was you know feasible. But uh, given the history of the entire enterprise, it's it's not really something you can just do overnight. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm more or less thinking about how does you know your your non SEC or Big Ten fan feel about things moving forward. We talk at, at, at length about, you know, the the waning interest in certain sectors like the Pac-12, for example, and how all in is everybody in that regard. But, yeah, I mean, for, for the Big Ten, which is the only thing that he has to worry about, they are 
potentially and probably moving more in that direction. So, yeah, I absolutely think that that being on his resume was a huge part of, along with the, you know, the dealings with pro athletes, with labor relations, all that streaming function or the, the TV function, uh, the streaming aspect of that, all that, all that stuff that pro sports is doing right now and they're making money off of, he's been involved with, and, and you can go ahead and just say, like, yeah, all of those things are going to matter to the Big Ten for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Number two, uh, he can enhance the Big Ten network. Um I have not watched a lot of CBS Sportsnet, and he was there, but I do watch a lot of the MLB Network, and I think it's very well done. Uh, I think everything they've done there is really, really good. Uh, as far as talent acquisition, the programming, the pacing, the way that um, they really dive into off-seasons of stuff is really, I mean, and, and, and when you have the Big Ten Network, you don't really have an off-season, but, you, I mean, until the summer, but the way that they do dive into the off-season in free agency and, and just different things has been really good, and he he was a huge part of that. So the Big Ten Network uh, will get that expertise in and help grow because he knows that, so I think, I think he can only help that grow uh, from there. I, I've watched the Big Ten Network before because Nebraska, even mm-hmm. though they – Aren't very good. I think, I've and I think it's do a good. good job. I think they do a good job. I just think you know, like you can always be better. And as the the media rights are revolve around your individual conference and your network even more, enhancing the value of that's only going to help you. Yep. You know, uh, and yeah. yeah, go ahead. Craig. No, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure, like you know, we've been talking quite a bit about the Pac-12 TV deal and the streaming future of college sports and all of that. I would imagine that if you're the Big Ten and you're a fan of the Big Ten probably uh an area that you can look towards having the solid or the solid foundation of the big 10 network they clearly maximize that i would imagine they're going to look to maximize that even more as much as possible and uh, i would think that if there was going to be any entities that successfully break through and start to make streaming more of the norm as opposed to just checking it out on fox abc cbs it would be a conference who already has all of that you know squared away and still has leftover that they can go and, and play around with in a whole network that's firmly established. And so, yeah, I think that uh, the TV part of this, even though they don't have a deal coming up in the near future, although it's not ACC long, it's uh, coming up again before that, uh, that will probably be a, a main area of focus, I would think, is how they, how they better utilize the – or how they can further utilize the network. And number one, he is used to working with difficult power brokers. I would – Throw the first one out there of being Rob Manfred <laughs> is difficult. Uh, MLB owners are difficult. The he's Major succeeded. League Baseball players are tif- difficult. He, he replaced Manfred, right? He, uh, yeah, he took yeah. yeah he was the Manfred COO, became but the he was yeah. yeah. So, but you still had yeah. He still had to work with that guy, and you know, I mean, I'm sure they had a great, a good working relationship, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's he, you know, is not popular. Rob Manfred might be the least popular league commissioner. Yeah, I mean, he probably is for I, – I don't know how many people could even name the baseball commissioner, honestly. You yeah. know what I mean? But Because uh, I don't think he's as as out there and up front as a Roger Goodell uh, or uh, Adam Silver. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he's got a reputation as being, you know, not the most favorable guy or, or not the biggest favorite in the world. But I, I, too, wonder, like, how much of that is just the baseball fan talking or the baseball reporter talking? And when you actually get these people behind the scenes who know them and know people and they're having these conversations and it's business, it's not personal. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a different type of relationship there. It's certainly not going to hurt uh, that he's got experience working with guys that have been deemed difficult. So, yeah, I think that all of that on his resume that you've, you've pointed towards, uh, whether working in the pros, working on TV deals, uh, working with you know commissioners, uh, COOs, that's that's all part of the reason why he is the guy getting the call post Kevin Warren, and I'm fascinated to see you know what he does picking up the ball and and running with it because it is a very unclear future. But the Big Ten is running with the ball and they've got everything on their side. So it, I'm curious to see what he does with it. All right, Paul, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, Paul K. 